Used to be everybody wanted to live right on the water. Yeah, we're starting to learn what the, the, the yeah, in your face reactions are to that. Um, this is a good reaction here. Now, okay, it's just casually sort of slumped into the creek. <laughs> nice and This one is a little bit, I don't know, maybe you can yeah. live in one corner of it, but not much of that. Um, by the way, the water and gas lines already would have been broken on these. So this has been undermined. <coughs> now, when it was built uh, 75 years ago, there was no permits needed to put it there. Now, if you wanted to put a house at that location, probably anywhere within, let's say, this line, this is my, my let's say, 100-year flood, flood line. And if you wanted to build a house in that area now, you wouldn't be allowed to. Um, but it might be that these weren't included in that early mapping. Anybody who lives in these zones has to have federal flood insurance have to pay for federal and flood insurance. As flood insurance, go, as insurance goes, it's, it's underwritten a lot. It's cheap insurance, but you still have to buy it. And when your house goes, you get to replace it, but the money doesn't go to improve it. Um, in fact, in most cases, really what you do need to do is improve the structure. So uh, you always have to fight with FEMA to get money to rebuild your house if something happens. Uh, and you may not get enough to actually make it work right. Channels, when you have a, a channelization, what it's doing is it's shrinking the, the width of the stream down below where it wants to be. It wants to be wider. As soon as you shrink it, the velocity through it speeds up, and it also backs up the water here. What it's doing on my table here is it's making this, this, all the soil in here very wet, it's saturated. <coughs> and the way development has worked, especially around the city, we've done just the opposite. We filled in in the parks, the old floodplains, and shrunk the creeks here. We filled in whole creek systems, filled them in, put houses on top, so there's not much room for this water to go anywhere. Okay, well, this is uh, interesting. Look, the, the culvert is very unstable in here. You have this whole back here that's been gradually eroding away. This one's gone. Two folks. Now, I want you to watch it carefully now. This is, this is a, notice, there's a lot of water going through this stream now. So it's more than normal flow out there now. When I let loose of this, oh, you gotta, give me a, right here. So this is, this is a flood condition. That one might not look there really. Yeah, this is what happens with floods. Big things occur. A dam is forcing the flow in that uh, bridge to go into half of the channel. It's cutting both sides there. Now, it's all the way out to almost to the full floodplain that I showed you before. So this flood is now going out to its limits. Now we haven't given it a 500 year flood. I didn't have good enough seal up here to do that. So uh, if you're the property owner here and your property used to be right here and your house used to be right there, guess what? The stream's here now. You can't even get a permit. You have to get a permit to fill that part of the stream in order to put the house back there. And you're not going to get a permit to do that. Okay. Cutting a little bit here. What happens is cuts here, opposite sides building up. It's cutting here, build up. And you'll see that in here there are various places there's a deep part of the channel. As it continues to grow here and develop, this deep, deeper channel will go from one end to the other. That's called the thalweg. Technical term for the deepest, fastest flowing part of the stream. Did you spell that? T-H-A-L-W-E-G. Thank you. German, and I'm not sure what it means. If somebody can tell me, I'd like to know. <coughs> it's the flow way or the fast flow way. Here it's coming down, then it hits the channels, that channelized portion of the <coughs> the river community down there. <coughs> and that's a condition that happens often in streams. You don't see it because they're down at the bottom. But the, the little rounded boulders can actually move a lot faster than, than the sand. Sands tend to move as a big unit. The bars uh, move a little bit at a time, but the rocks move uh, sometimes quite fast. And you'll see that if the, as the velocity goes up. You can watch it just happening here. When they start moving, they move fast. So, it's cutting here. Um, 
roofer didn't do a good job on that one. Um, I've got a bridge. The abutments on this bridge are lined up at a right angle to the bridge itself. Do we have any engineers here who would want to comment on the design of this? Anybody who's not an engineer wants to comment on the design here? What is it going to do? You can, you can actually look at it and predict. Direct, direct the flow. Where? To this bank, yeah, unfortunately. Exactly. Not, not downstream, but over that way. Yeah. Right. Well, we also we already lost a house, by the way. This yeah. is one of my plan, I guess. Um, take a look here. Get in close and watch this erosion process. What happens typically is it erodes at the base and with a cliff, the standard erosion process is that it undermines the bottom and then the top falls down on it. I got a little bit smart. Anyway, it's not, now it's time to run a little bit more of a, a rainstorm. So put a, bit, put a rainstorm through here a while and watch. I want you to watch closely, because now things change more rapidly. This stream or is, continues to be pushed over this way by the abutments of the bridge, and that's probably partly what caused the demise of this house. Wow. Um, <coughs> the, the bridge actually has more sediment around it now. Well, it's actually it hardly out. functioning as a dam. Yeah. You see, it's, it's obstructing the channel. And this is not helping. I should take that out. Because somebody... Now, this is one of the major problems with maintenance. When you have trees that fall into streams and fall out bridges, whose job is it to get rid of that? Is it the arborist who cuts the trees? Is it the highway department who maintains this? It's always a difficult point because, look, Guys with chainsaws don't go into underwater. Now the other thing, take note of there's some problems down at the uh, channelization <coughs> where there's been leakage behind the bulkhead. Uh, very likely the Whoa. storm is going to exceed there. Not going to let it go now. Here it goes. Here we go. Look. Oh my God. This culvert's about to go. Oh geez. <laughs> So this is your yep. storm phenomenon. You're in danger. Well, what's your head? We've had a failure at the culvert. You're definitely Every piece of debris in the creek does its own bit of damage. Well, we've, had, we've had a total failure of this um, channelization because the water went over the top. Of course, I don't have good seals. I didn't, comp I didn't cement this down to bedrock. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> So we'll take a look and see what the damage is. Yeah. 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 Also, not. take note that downstream, we have a large deposit where this stream enters the river. You know what this deposit's called? So, well, if it was the Nile River, what would it be called? Delta. Delta, right? Delta. This is the Delta deposit. This is where the river comes to a big body of water and it drops below the sediment just right at the bottom, like the Mississippi River. Not a normal. Yeah. And with New Orleans, what we've done, this is a real good instance. What we've done with New Orleans is we've built 100 miles of this stuff. So that we've run it all the way through the delta. So that the river runs all the way out to the end of the delta. It doesn't deposit any of this sediment in the Mississippi Delta anymore, which is why it's sinking. And we're losing, I don't know how many square miles of uh, salt marsh every year.